tougher, looks strong. So head-to-head -head duels happening in the elite men's and women's races here at the Virgin London Marathon. Sumgong, I must say, doesn't look like she's had a fall and had to come back. She looks really comfortable, ticking along nicely. Two for not letting her get away. Well, yeah, and under 10 minutes to go, and it's, uh, it's, it's, well, look at that. So 2.15 through 40K. It's not going to be a super, super fast time, but, oh, what a finish we're going to have from these two. Sumgong relentlessly applying pressure to two for she's just two for the defending champion of course some gone some, something of an underdog came in a bit off the radar here very talented but not nearly as well known and therefore doesn't have the pressure that some of these other athletes are under i tell i tell you what uh, remember that last year we said what a big surprise that took for one but we're not saying that this year because she's yeah. proved herself to be a great competitor. She really has done, and uh, and she's doing very well. Whether Sum Gong can hold her off throughout the whole race, we know that she's very, very quick. They're different in stature, of course. 5.16 16. the last mile, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Sum Gong really not not apparently paying at all for the fall she had and for, for taking on this race. So great running from Sum Gong here. It's interesting, we talk about the experienced athletes who have you know gold medals to their name as the the big hitters and the ones to watch but sometimes they're they're just over their peak and you know the, the young enough young and younger and upcoming athletes um take their place oh two for look behind there mm. never a good sign as we i oh. just wonder what an race some gong is having two for look behind herself a moment ago so that's, that's not a good sign. She may be settling for second place. Sum Gong really looking very confident. Nice and easy. Coming into birdcage walk now past Big Ben. And I think Sum Gong has got a slight gap on Tufa. So can she keep her head down and keep the pressure up on Tufa? Tufa, is, once, once there's a gap there, the, the person behind really has to work hard to close the gap. But it has happened. I've seen incredible... Big gaps closed in the last kilometre of marathon races before, but Sum Gong looking really comfortable. Yes, she is, and, and I tell you, um, looking back earlier on this season, she ran a personal best half marathon at 66, 20, 58. So that was in the Ras Al Kamar, and and so that was an indicator. Some of them yep. have run that uh, half marathon and not done particularly quick times. They've just used it as a as a, an in introduction to this. But yep. my goodness me, the it's signals from that are much more positive here for Sum Gong in this marathon with Tufa now. Yep. I think finding it a bit tough. If Sum Gong's just done a PB, that shows she's improving. She, she's on an up, upward curve. Uh, she could have improved since then, and which is we're seeing in this performance today. Tufa just looked behind her, behind her again there. So I think Tufa may have given up on the title, but still quite a small gap. But Tufa's going to have to work super hard to close that gap and get past Sum Gong. We know she's got a great sprint finish from her win here last year. But Sum Gong looking really comfortable, just keeping the pressure. Sum Gong not looking behind her, just keeping piling on the pressure on, on Tufa. And... Uh, Sum Gong looks intent on winning this race. Well, Tufa may not uh, yet be finished because she can sprint, and there's, uh, you know, at the end of this race, uh, that could be the difference with tired legs. You can just muster that sprint finish. She's not done yet, that's for sure. <laughs> we talk about sprint finishes, Stuart, but to, I tell you, at this stage of a marathon, your legs... <laughs> sprint finish isn't what I would describe it. You you just try to make your legs go faster, but you're so exhausted at this stage of the le race. Your legs are like jelly. All you can do is just keep going as fast as you possibly can. But Sum Gong, oh, what a brilliant race. Really kept up the pressure in those last few miles. She's got a fair old gap on Tufa now, just 600 metres to go. But Tufa, you know, Tufa's got somebody to chase, and she, she hasn't given up. I thought, mate, with the glances behind her, perhaps it was too much for her, but... She really looks like she's working hard to close that gap. Yeah, 600 metres to go then in this women's uh, 36th version of this London Marathon, this Virgin London Marathon. And uh, 
Sun Gong looks to me as though she may well have found just another little uh, percentage or so as a subtle move away, and I think that may be enough to take that win because I don't think Tuffa this time has got enough distance, if she had it in her anyway, uh, to pull down this last 600 metres. It must be 400 metres now. This is brilliant front running Fabulous. from Sun Gong, not looking behind her, not letting Tuffa get even a, see any chinks in her armour if she has any. Now turning into the Mal, Sun Gong keeping up the pressure. It's not going to be a super, super fast time for these ladies, but oh, what a what a brilliant example of front running. Sumagong then, in the final stages, 385 yards to go. It tells us about that uh, gantry. About Tufa, the defending champion, not able to defend this year, as Sumagong took it on. She fell at a drink station, got up. We thought, did would that uh, take its penalty? Uh, pay a, would she pay a penalty? No, is the answer. She's away and she's going to take her first London Marathon. It really is quite something. Remember, last year she was sixth on her London debut. This year she's gone a few places better. She is going to be the champion. Look at this. Sumagong and Tuffa desperate to try and uh, close the gap in the final stages. Those legs tired and heavy and getting heavier. And Tuffa, look at this, really working very hard. Sumagong not daring to look behind, just wants to keep going, heading to that finish. 14th marathon for her this on this day, and 14th is a lucky number because she's coming through to take this uh, a marathon gold medal. And look at that, 2.22.59. Not particularly quick, but that was a race, and Tuffa this time in second place. And I tell you what, that was some race. Oh, brilliant. She cannot believe it. Look at that. She shakes her head. I cannot believe it. I'm the champion. And she's now showing the emotion of what the stresses and strains have taken. And Kiplagat is going to come in to take the third place. And in fourth place there, I believe, that's the rush runner from Belarus who's, who's come through the field incredibly at the end of the race. I'm not sure where she got that from, but Florence Kiplagat now in third place. Well done to Florence Kiplagat. Third place, well tired. She's very, very tired, as you can see. She tried desperately to hold on, but uh, not, uh, not possible on this day. You're quite right. Yeah, so Mazarona from Belarus. Incredible, very surprising finish there from her. She raced through the field, Ahead of came Mergen. from outside the top ten to fourth place over the last few miles. Where did she get that from? Who There's knows? The world champion coming through next in Debarba found it too tough on this day. So not super fast finishing times from, from this quality of field, Stuart, but what a race. Jemima Sungong. I'm so happy for her. She's <laughs> she's been a bridesmaid, but very experienced. You know, incredible and falling as well. What a race from her. Well, I tell you what, we probably have a look back in a moment at what happened at the drink station. This is what happened. There she goes. Whoa. Now, that is a heavy, heavy, heavy fall. Oh, three of them went now, down. There are three Katani. of them, and Katani as well. Ooh. And uh, Murga as well look, went down, who just uh, came through the finish. And Sun Gong was holding uh, her Sun head there. That was a hard fall. That was a and now, the, the job then was to come back um, and, and slowly and steadily and sensibly, but she hurt herself. She, she was no holding question. her head. She, she must have hit her head. I mean, that yeah. is phenomenal. And then to get a drink station. Oh, what a race. I mean, oh. she, she would have... She would have. What would she have done had she not fallen? Is the question. Well, that was a heavy fall. There's no question about that. She's recovered well. A lot of credit. And this year, once again, we say, what a surprise! We've got a surprise result of the London Marathon. Well, we're heading back now, as we see, to the finish, and uh, let's have a look and see what the men are doing in a moment. The, there are the. There are the. There's a fourth, pl a third place, and first and third, <coughs> with uh, Florence Kiplagat, of course. 2.22.58, 2.23.03 and 2.23.39, the top three times. But this is the finish to a young woman who absolutely, well, 
fell so heavily that, that survival was really what it was all about. And it wasn't, in the end, survival. It was a terrific run. And yeah. the success she truly deserves. She's got a bump on her head, look, on the right side. And that is really, what a character. What a sheer belief she must have had. Yeah, Wonderful. To, I mean, to fall that late in the race, uh, get up, and that front running, she didn't give two for an inch. Just